Hey, hello, my name is Dr. Jade Burns and I'm an assistant professor at the University of Michigan School of Nursing. My research broadly uses technologies such as any virtual space and social media to increase access to healthcare and preventative services for adolescents and adults, specifically youth of color and young black males. So over a year ago, um, we as the University of Michigan School of Nursing and Detroit Community Health Connection, um, excuse me, uh, formed a community academic partnership uh, to, to serve um, their patient population in the city to improve black, men, black men's health of all ages. So since 2020 and actually 2019, we've had a, a numerous events that have happened in person and online. And today I'm happy to present uh, DCHC's monthly men's health series um, as the, for this month, which will be highlighting successful business owners and entrepreneurs in fitness around Detroit and Metro Detroit. So I'm going to introduce Derek, Mr. Derek Ware, who will be moderating this event. And he is the Director of Outreach and Public Affairs and is one of the executive leaders at Detroit Community Health Connection. And I would like to thank Detroit Community Health Connection, the President and CEO, Mr. Wayne Bradley, Senior, and staff and the Board of Directors, University of Michigan School of Nursing, the Curtis Center, which is at the uh, University of Michigan School of Social Work, the DRB Lab, and all the staff and research assistants who have made this event possible. So that is all I have to say. So Derek, can you take it away? Absolutely. Good afternoon, everyone. Again, I'm Derek Ware with Detroit Community Health Connection. I want to thank Dr. Burns and McKenzie uh, for helping put this on. Also like to thank the DRB Lab, uh, We Dare, University of Michigan, and the Curtis Center as well. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about uh, physical wellness because of Fitness Month. And we have two uh, uh, business owners of a fitness center, uh, Des Johnson the second and Christopher Chris Huff the Savage. Um, so we're going to uh, have a general conversation about health and fitness and what we should do and what we shouldn't be doing. But uh, I want to give uh, both of you an opportunity to introduce yourselves. We can go with you first, Des. Hey, how you guys doing? My name is uh, Desi Johnson. Uh, as you just stated, I am a uh, fitness uh, entrepreneur. Uh, my focus is kind of more uh, for, you know, more in, in regards to the corporate wellness, the busy family uh, professional. Uh, I've been doing this for quite some time. Uh, not only am I a, uh, a lifestyle coach or a corporate wellness coach, I'm also a, uh, a leader of a uh, financial institution as well. Uh, and I have a, uh, a family of five, you know, so with all that being said, uh, my, my focus is to uh, basically, you know, make sure though the, the busy professionals uh, are doing those type of things that they need to be doing to make sure that they're healthy, uh, to make sure they're fit, uh, not just only them, their families as well, so that they can kind of perform at the highest level possible when it comes to their career and their family goals. And uh, that's what I do. I'm a, a American Council of uh, Exercise a certified trainer. I'm a uh, National Academy of Sports Medicine uh, certified trainer as well, a certified corporate wellness coach and licensed nutritionist as well. Mr. Huff, sir. Well, pretty simple. I'm the owner of Performance 80 um, Training, LLC. Um, I'm a graduate of Detroit Central, a graduate of Hillsdale College. Um, I would say my base is pretty much a little bit of everything. Um, athletes, everyday people, women, um former athlete um um pretty much like Des, pretty much certified and pretty much you know any any aspects of training that you can name um my degree is in kinesiology um it's pretty much like um pretty much piggyback on Des says pretty much is what i'm covering I'm married family of five you know um i um, been pretty striving in the community um close to 30 years now i've been um, a gym owner um 25 years now Okay, sounds good. I guess five is the magic number for today. Yeah. <laughs> Got a, a quick question. We're going to jump back to Des and then we'll come back to you, Chris. But this general question is, why did you become a fitness trainer? You know what? Um, I, I, I became a, a fit. I, I've always been in the fitness. I've always been in, a, in sports. I've always been into kind of health. Uh, but, you know, the, the, the biggest thing, the reason why I really got into it was kind of due to uh, I was, uh, my mother um, had struggled with chronic diseases um, when I was a little bit uh, younger. Uh, she had, uh, you know, kidney disease uh, and she had uh, lupus. 
and kind of going through the you know the process of, of growing up as a kid, I saw all the, the different things that she kind of went went through. I, I I saw a lot of you know different chronic diseases and different things like that that you know the Afri African American community was basically faced with. You know, so I wanted to obviously do something in regards to that to do things that's basically preventative to kind of fight you know the chronic diseases. Um, and then I, I I believe too you know when I got in the corporate, you know, the corporate world, I started seeing a whole lot of folks, you know, obviously not necessarily knowing what they needed to do. So, you know, you got folks, you know, one falling into the, the potential for chronic diseases, maybe not eating right, maybe not working out, maybe not drinking enough water. I saw that there was a, 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 a very uh, good niche in regards to uh, how I could potentially develop a platform that was kind of geared towards those busy professionals. So, um, you know, not only, you know, did I move from just being that personal trainer aspect, it was some years ago where I said, well, I could potentially make this a more of a corporate wellness focus as well. So that one, I can kind of help in regards to the productivity, you know, of you know the workplace. And at the same time, kind of add value, you know, to the people and giving them the tools and the educational resources that they needed to be successful, you know, like I said earlier, in their family, in, re, in their careers, and to potentially fight and prevent, you know, chronic diseases. So again, going back to it, it was it was my mom, it was my, my, my love for sports, and then it was also seeing the struggles and the challenges of uh, corporate America with me being, you know, a businessman. With that, with that said, Des, uh, how do you keep fitness training uh, knowledge up to date? You know what? I, I stay. I'm I'm real big on I'm real big on education. You know, so I'm I'm constantly you know going back you know to be you know recertified. Uh, I make sure that you know I I'm I'm very involved with the National Academy of Sports Medicine. I'm very involved with the American uh, Council of Exercise. I'm very involved with making sure that I continue uh, my education, and then I make sure that I I, I network. And I connect with, you know, different leaders in the communities that may be doing things at a different level or doing things at a different light or a different perspective. And I'm, I'm constantly, you know, digging deep to learn more. I mean, at the end of the day, man, it's an it's a ever, ever changing world. Corporate America is changing. People are changing. Obviously, we're dealing with something different now in regards with a, a, another disease, the, uh, COVID. You know, so, you know, again, it is very important, you know, for, or for myself with everything that we kind of got with that we dealing with and everything that we kind of got going on in the world. I have to make sure that I'm able to be able to assist and train folks, whether you got a sports injury, whether you have a chronic disease. And then right now I'm, I'm starting to connect with a lot of people that may have been experienced, you know, different symptoms of COVID. And they're starting to feel a little bit better and they feel that they're trying to start working out and different things like that. So again, you, you got to be knowledgeable in this game. And that's the reason why I make sure I keep my education and my growth as a, a top priority so that I can assist, you know, people the best way that I can. Chris, I want to give you the same question. What Wait, made you hold become on. A Oh, Mr. Weir. I was about to tell me you got three of us oh, on. Yeah, I was going to tell them too. You probably only see me. I'm the lady in the group. So when I pop off, there's four. Um, but Armand, can you. Is he me? on? Yes, yes he, he is. is. Okay. Welcome, my brother. Okay. How you doing, uh, Mr. Weir? How you doing? I'm and good. Thank you sir. all for coming, all three of you and the moderator. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Dr. Burns. What would we do it without you? Well, well, let's jump back so we can uh, uh, throw Armand in here. Mr. Harris, welcome. Um, why, why don't you tell us a little bit about, about you and what you do at your fitness site as a business owner? Uh, yeah, so um, my name is Armand uh, Harris, better known as Armand Rashad. I own a Jabs Gym at Eastern Market, uh, where I serve on the um, board of directors in Eastern Market Corporation. Uh, I created Horrendous Town Detroit in 2012 uh, with locations in Chicago, Ann Arbor. Kalamazoo University of Michigan, as well as Eastern Michigan University. And, um, you know, I'm just a, a, a fitness leader. So I'm also uh, ambassador for Lululemon Athletic Company, in addition to being uh, a spokesman for the American Heart Association. Um, the list goes on and on. I'm just uh, happy to be here and happy to, to um, encourage and educate and motivate others to uh, be healthy and active. Well, we appreciate it. Glad you're here. But I got a question for you. Uh, what inspired you to combine fitness 
with networking? Oh man, so um, initially I understood uh, going to Wayne State University where I played football at, uh, I understood the, the um, importance of a team environment, a community. Um, and a lot of times, uh, a lot of people, especially our folks, um, they don't, we, don't, we, won't, we won't stick to something unless it's uh, fun and entertaining. So when I realized with the networking out concept at Run This Town, I realized I'll make it more like a social event, a social gathering, uh, much like um, it is at Jab's Gym now, that people would be more likely to stick to the program. So we coined the phrase networking out so people can network, uh, do good business at the same time of getting in the best shape of their lives. I want to get back to Chris, though, then I'll come back to you because I want you to answer the same question. What made you become a fitness trainer, Chris? Well, I don't have no like a like a elaborate story about how it came about. I was a college athlete trying to find my way, what I wanted to do. Um, you know, I love working out. That's what I love to do. And, you know, as an athlete, you know, you with the strength coach, you spend a lot of time with the strength coach when you first get there. So I spent a lot of time with him. So I'm like, no, so this is what you do. huh? So me and him really got, I got really close with my strength coach in college. I'm like, wow, you get paid for doing this? You get paid to do something you love to do. So I took interest. So, and as I took interest, it grew. You know, it wasn't like I was looking like, oh, I saw we got high blood pressure in our community. It was something I was looking to find myself. So, and when I found myself, I kind of stuck to it. And when I put my mind to something, I kind of build upon it. And I just build on it and build on it and build on it and build on it. So that's kind of how I got into it. It wasn't like, you know, I saw, you know, uh, we got high blood pressure or this or that. I was basically looking to find myself. So, and that's how I found myself by and through fitness, because that's what I love to do. And you love it, but I'm getting paid to do something I love to do. So, and if, if, if you love something, it like you never, it felt like I haven't worked in 30 years. So, you know, I'm doing that's something. That's what I they say. Do. You find your passion. Yeah, I found my well. passion. Yeah, that's what it is. I have my passion. So I feel like I haven't had a job since I became an adult. <laughs> Another question for you, Chris. What, um, how, how has your past experience as a college athlete shaped your professional work? Well, being a, um, being an athlete, um, either you're gonna be a follower or a leader. Everybody want to be that captain on the sports scene, so I wanted to be a leader. So by being a leader, I was always a captain through high school, college. I became a leader. So when you become a leader, it kind of instills in you, so I can lead my group. So I'm sure the guys. No, when you lead in a fitness group or a class, you got to lead. They got to follow you. They watching you. So being in sports, it kind of helped me like lead a group. I'm out in with sports. You got to be outspoken. If you're a leader on a team, you got to be outspoken. So I'm I'm very outspoken. So uh, I'm, I've seen both of the guys around, you know, over the years through the community. I'm a very outspoken guy. So, you know, I lead by example. So and I led on the football field and on the track. I led by example. So I kind of lead. So. Uh, I'm mostly through action. Understood. So can you explain, be a savage? What, what's that about? <laughs> Every day I'm a savage. You just, you live by this. It's just, it's just a moniker. It's just a way of living. Everything okay. you it's like full go. You know, a savage do anything. They, you know, just all watch, just do whatever they want, when they want, and it's, and you go after it. So just make it happen. Just make it happen. Ahmad, sir, same question. Why did you become a fitness trainer? Man, it's, a, it's interesting because I actually, um, uh, I did a TV show in LA and then I got back and thought I would be rich when I got back from TV. And that was, uh, that, that it couldn't be further from the truth. So I looked up and my best friend in the world, my heart, uh, my grandfather uh, was struggling with diabetes. And I realized that, um, I, I realized like, man, one, I need, I, I got to figure out something to, to do. And then two, I got to, I got to, kind of fight this problem, right? And my granddad, my, you know, um, my best friend in the world, the guy who saved my life, um, you know, struggled with diabetes. So, so I said, man, how can I, how can I use my influence in the Detroit community to make sure that no one has to deal with this before, or we can limit it or mitigate it. So I just decided to, uh, so I started to run this time program and say, hey, everybody just come work out for free. Um, we wasn't making any money per se, but I mean, I think we inspired a lot of people to just get out and, and get outside and run and move and sweat. And we saw a lot of pounds dropping. I mean, people lose 60, 70, 80, 90 pounds. And everybody on this call, um, yourself including Dr. Burr, looks, looks um, 
this world looks pretty, you know, in shape. I know Huff is in, in, in great shape and moves good as well as Brother Dez. Um, but, you know, it's life changing when you lose 60, 70, 80, 90 pounds. I mean, you're changing a person's life. So I saw that, man. I was so motivated and driven. And it just so happens to be that the business caught up to the passion for defeating uh, chronic diseases related to weight. As trainers, I know that you set goals for your clients, but what about your own goals? Do you set your um, yourself? Do you set goals for yourself? And if so, what are they? Yes, yeah, you want to hop in? Want me to go ahead and take that one over? Yes, sir. We can we can I go down you. the line. <laughs> I got you, sir. You know what? You know, it, I mean, it's very important. And, and again, you you know, you know, uh, Huff hit on this, um, you know, really really well. I mean, at the end of the day, we're leaders. And, and, and with us being leaders, we all have our community within the community and they're looking at everything that we're doing. They're coming to us for, for guidance. They're coming for, you know, and, and so, you know, with that being said, you know, what would it look like if we're saying, do this, do this, do this, and we're not necessarily doing it, doing it ourselves. So, you know, you know, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, a lot of, a lot of my, my fit family, uh, and that's what I call them, my fit family, uh, uh, my clients are busy family professionals. They're, they're trying to they're trying to balance life. You know, you got work, you got the, the, the kids, you got soccer practice, you know, soccer practice or football or, or basketball or cheer. You got all these different things going on. You got, you know, your, your, your wife and your husband, you got to have your date nights. You want to try to travel. It's a whole lot that you want to do. You know, uh, you got these high demands and high expectations of the corporate world as well. So I do basically what I uh, train my clients to do, create a lifestyle that's based upon implementing healthy habits. So basically um, setting priorities, setting long-term and short-term goals, um, all of those different things. Uh, uh, I actually have an, an app um, that I manage. It's a, uh, basically a, a, a custom app that's designed for those busy professionals. And with this app, what it does is, and I, I use it for myself, you know, uh, what it does, it, it, it creates daily healthy habits. So in regards to, to, to sleep, I have sleep that I manage. I have your calorie burns per day that I manage. I design your full nutrition program. I designed your workout program. And then at the end of the, the day, it's basically communicating to you, hey, did you hit this? Did you hit this? Did you hit this? Because again, what this is basically doing is setting a, a daily goal. And this daily goal is setting healthy habits. So it, it, that's what I do for myself. And that's basically what I the model that I create for my clients as well. And that basically is what's keeping me in line in regards to who and what I need to be for my corporation, for my family, and my dad's two fit clients. Chris, what about you? Do you set goals for yourself? Uh, honestly, yeah. My goal is basically to be the most dominant dude around. <laughs> if anybody watched any of my social media when I left, I try to be the most dominant lifter around. I'm sure the guys probably saying I watch all these guys. I've been around these guys, seeing what they do. Um, I try to be the most dominant guy around. And if I do that, that shows my clients I have to be dominant as well. So that's one of my goals. Anything I do, I try to push it, you know, you know, past the limits. I try to go far. Um, a lot of people know when I lift, I don't count reps. Everything I do is to failure. So if I do six sets, it's six sets to failure. So that's kind of the way I kind of live. I don't set like um, a cap on what I do. Like I said, I'm going to do five sets of 10. I don't do that. I go, because you might get to 10 and you might have a little bit more left than you. So why you want to leave something on the flow? I always say never leave no money on the flow. Pick everything up. So that's kind of how I keep myself in shape. I kind of push the limits. So that's that's kind of where I stand. That's what kind of been, uh, been pushing me, you know, throughout the years. Like I said, I've been running my business well over 25 years now. So that's kind of been been my standpoint. So it's been working for me. I don't know if it worked for everybody else, but that works for me. What about you, Armand? And see, all this time I've been I've been giving cats reps. I've been saying, hey, look, get, give me good, good 15 reps, good 20 reps. And, and, and Big Brother Huff come in here and say he go to failure. So now I got to not be mad at me at Jab Gym because I said, look, you go to failure. Huff say you got to go to failure. So you're going to have to go to failure, man. I like that, man. I love that. That keyword, I, I heard on that. That keyword hypertrophy, remember that. 
Like, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm like, look, look, look. I'm going to say it three times. Say, man, Huff, you know, after the third time I say it, I'm going to just steal it. I'm going to say, where's mine? Now I stole it from Huff. Yeah, it I is. Like, man, you know, I like that a lot. Um, man, I, I, ironically, my um, my goals aren't necessarily in the gym. I've been trying to, and I know I've done a, uh, I, I think I've done a decent job with connecting with dads, but my Joe's goals in the health and wellness community are somewhat uh, outside of the gym, where one, I want to connect with other guys who are dominating their industry. I think dads and I connect, I think Huff and I still need to connect. And then two, I want to um, uh, inspire and, and somewhat mentor the new up and comer fitness leaders who are coming in and, and you know, and, and want to understand how to attract clients, you know, how to get people in the best shape of their lives. And, and so, so when I think about goals, I think about um, when I'm in the gym and I have a lot of people who are actually trainers who actually are members of my gym as well. And they're training under me. I see how I can I affect them to, um, because I understand that like I can't get to everybody, right? So if I could connect and kind of, you know, give some things that I know uh, or some, uh, you know, whatever edge, competitive advantage I can give to others uh, via connecting the fitness space, we can as a whole uh, reach more people, right? Because I'm not in Northville, right? I'm not in uh, I'm not in Bloomfield. I'm not in all these different communities, but there's somewhere, there's a Chris Huff, there's a, a Dez Too Fit, there's Armand Rashad, somewhere in those communities that need someone like us to connect with them so they can be able to take over their community as well. So that's kind of where my goal is right now in fitness. Um, and it's been fun so far. Since we're talking about clients, let's talk about uh, uh, some clients, particularly men. H how do you get us started? I mean, you, you guys are fit. How do you get somebody that's not fit how do you get us started? Well, if you want me to take this one, or, or you got it, sir. Uh, well, we all know men are the toughest guy for getting the gym because they're like most men think they know what they're doing. Yeah, absolutely. And the first thing they're gonna do, they're gonna go to the gym, bench press a couple of times, and walk out the gym. <laughs> so, and, and and that's what we deal with. Like my gym is basically filled with women and athletes, and I got a couple of dudes and. With Armana and Des, you know, they're more aesthetic guys. They are very aesthetic. They're very cut and lean. So they can really draw guys more attention because that's what guys are tending to do. But they don't know what they took to, to get there. They don't know what they got, what they took to really, you know, get there. So guys are, it's hard to get guys to do cardio. So that's the hardest part is get them. So you got to break it down really, really, really slow. Like, let's say, for instance, okay, I want you to slam this slam ball and go to the battle rope. Then I let you bench press, and then you just kind of ease them into a circuit. So that's how you could get guys in, like giving them something they like, and then giving them something they really don't like. So like say, leg day. So leg day is tough as that guy to get guys to do. Everybody know leg day is my every day is leg day in my book. Everybody <laughs> in this gym know every day is leg day. Every day is leg day. I squat every day. So um, I squat every day. Guys getting guys to do legs, it's the toughest thing on the planet. But what you do, throw in goblet squats, throw in body weight squats, throw in lunges, push the sled, trick them. Because when they put in it, most guys don't want to put that bar on their back and go down low. And if they do it, they're doing quarter squats and they're doing it all wrong and they wonder why they need hurt. So basically it's getting knowledgeable trainers. And I like what I'm all talking about, like kind of mentoring other trainers, which is tough because everybody's Instagram famous now. So everybody want to train because it looks cool and yeah. they're not educated. So you can catch a guy that got aesthetics but don't know anything. So now you're teaching people how to do things wrong. Yeah. So um, getting trainers and trying to uh, mentor them, like you said, I have a lot of trainers that come through my gym. But teaching them how to do it right and actually train people correct, especially men, is tough. And I'm finding women are winning the fitness game training. Women is winning the game over men. I think women can dominate the training game if they really wanted to. But getting men in the gym is, is so tough. So I find that you got to bring, you got to start these little circuits where you're giving them, you know, the exercise they like and then surround it with the ones they like. You're tricking them. Jedi mind trick. That's what I call it. You're tricking them. So, and you just give, like I, everybody know here Tuesday, it's hard to kill Tuesday. So I'm going to let the guys bench press, but they're going to do everything else around it. So that way I'm getting that cardiovascular up. They're getting everything in. And leg day, like you said, leg day is probably the toughest day to get guys to do. The toughest. Now I'll let one of the other guys hit on it. Yeah, that, you know, that's funny that you say that, man. But it, 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 it's the, the, the key is, is, is education, Huff. You got that. But I found out that kind of works for me, too, is finding out the motivation, right? 
Because, I mean, at the end of the day, you know, everybody is doing it, you know, for a different reason. You know, obviously, just like you, you, you started the uh, conversation, the conversation was, hey, how did you get into fitness? What was your reason behind it? And, uh, and was some of our similars were, were similar, answers were similar. Some of those answers were different. So the approach that I, that I take, you know, because, again, I, I act as a consultant to corporations all over. Um, and, and my goal is to kind of go in and find out, hey, what is your organization struggling with? Um, what it could be the, the potential could be the male, right? So it, it's trying to identify and having a conversation. Some folks want to get in shape is because they may be faced with a chronic disease or battling a chronic disease, right? So it's going to be very important to have that conversation to show them the benefit behind that. Some folks may, some dudes may be wanting to get because they might be looking to try to find their wife. You know what I'm saying? They may be, want, they may be yeah, they may be want to look a certain way in regards to, you know, appearance. Uh, some folks may know the, 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 the corporate thing of everything, right? The corporate wellness aspect, this, this is it. If you look good, if you feel good, you're more productive, and then you potentially end up being a bit more successful. So they may be wanting to get a lot of the mental aspects of working out and that appearance and that, that vibe and that energy to kind of get where they want to go. So, you know, at the end of the day, my approach, you know, that I take, because again, is my clientele, you know, ranges, you know, from, you know, high level execs to the to, to, to corporate folks, to, to doctors, to lawyers, to busy professionals or whatever you want to, you know, be, hey, what's your motivation? What's your reason behind this? And we're going to sit down and have a conversation and create a healthy lifestyle and a ha healthy habit and long-term and short-term goals to get you where you want to be. But number one is making sure you find that motivation and then number making sure you educate them all the way, all but, along. But Des, based on what you just said, everybody's busy. Yeah. Um, what do you say to someone who is unsure how to start incorporating, incorporating more physical activity into their busy schedule? I mean, what, I mean, when it comes down to anything, I mean, it's going to come down to uh, what, are your, your, what are your priorities, right? At the end of the day, we know that that naturally our, our bodies are designed to break down. So every, every single day, everything that we do, we're fighting the clock because we're not going to always be here. Right. Something's going to happen. Right. So, you know, I, I, the, the, the conversation piece and the way I have it is, hey, look, you're going to need to fit this in your lifestyle. All right. So just like you fit in, you're getting up and going to work every single day. Just like we fit in that you may be potentially, you know, going out to the bar, having drinks, going on vacation or doing what you do. The reason this is this should be a top priority. Uh, again, we, we like I said before, that that health and that wellness and that lifestyle, that's going to add value to everything. Your mental, your emotion, your physical. So I believe in setting goals, the, the small goals. And those small goals eventually turn into the big goals if you got things in place that's helping folks with accountability, with discipline, with coaching, with relationship building, and you build people up. And, and, and I believe in building people up. I don't, I'm not one of those type of trainers to where I'm going to work with someone for a specific amount of time and try to kind of keep them, keep them, keep them, keep them up. What my goal is to educate you, build you up to where you can basically do it on, the, on your own and you can send me some referrals and I can get them good too. Absolutely. Amar, you want to add anything? Uh, yeah, I mean, for, for me, you know, Jab's the boxing gym, so it's a little bit different, and I have a, um, a somewhat of an edge to because his men are men are a little bit more okay with with boxing rather than, um, especially you know, our classroom is dark lit, so you can't really see what's going on. And I think part of it, and I know the fellas can uh, attest to this, part of it is men don't want to be in an environment that is dominated by women. Most of my clients are women as well. Men don't want to be in an environment that's dominated by women. You got uh, you know, Huff walking around. You know, you know, you got you got this who fit with his abs out and you got all these women around and no man wants to feel intimidated in that environment. So what I do, 
is we got the dark room set up where it's like, look, hey boss, you know, do as much as you possibly can do. You know what I mean? Take your time. If you, if you, if you wanna uh, go slow, feel free to go slow. Just come back and kind of keep working into them. And I think that's uh, kind of how Dad said, builds the, um, builds the um, confidence up where it's like, okay, I'm starting to get my wind going. And that's also too, as um, you know, Hub said, that's also how I trick my guys into doing a lot of cardio because we are doing so many different boxing classes. Quick question. What roles do, because you brought it up, what yeah. roles do family and friends in a person's physical health play? I'll defer to the two fellas because I'm, I'm, I'm a single brother and then I'll have no children. I'll defer to the two fellas that have the families. But you don't have necessarily have to have um, kids. We're talking about just family and friends. I mean, you, you pick your family, but your friends you, you, you have. So well, It plays a big part. Friends play a big part in it. Um, friends need to be more truthful. A lot of friends are not truthful. Um, if my, if any of my friends are out of shape, I'm going to tell you. Hey, <laughs> brother, I need you to be around. And if you if anybody been watching my social media lately, I've been pushing men health for a while, especially when the pandemic started. I've been pushing it hard. Like I have a men's, only men's challenge going on right now. Well, I only want men. Because right now, um, like you said, his gym is dominant. My gym is dominated by women and athletes. But my women are stronger than most men. And, and like you said, that is very intimidating for a guy to walk in and a lady squatting more than you. And like, I don't want to be in there because I'm going to tell you right now, no lady outlifting me. I'm sorry. It's not happening. I'm sorry. I don't care. People are like, oh, I don't care. God be like, oh, I don't care. You should. <laughs> you should. So friends play a big part into it. Motivating. You know, family, you got you to have family to motivate you. If you have a family member, you know they're out of shape, you got to motivate them. I have a story. My son was um, a little overweight. I've been posting. If anybody watched me, I've been posting my son. He dropped 90 pounds during the pandemic. And, and he looks great. He's 9% body fat now. But he took it upon himself. Me and my wife didn't push him. We threw a little, hey, you want to do this? You want to do this? And then one day he said he was fed up. So I made sure I helped him. So once somebody reached out for you and said they want help, you got to help them. That's when you go full go. Because if you push too hard, when they don't want help, they're going to stay away from you. So you gotta, you gotta, you gotta like kind of, kind of just gradually get them involved. Cause if a person not ready to benefit, they not. Yeah, all they gonna do is do two days and never, never come back again. And then they wasted those two days. You want to get them to come back that third and fourth day and then come back next week. So it gotta be kind of motivating. You gotta motivate them to do it. Once you, once you reel them in, you gotta motivate them and keep them there. And that's one of the hardest parts of fitness is keeping people there. So that's what like. Like I said, you got to come up with new things to keep people interested in what you're doing. Like, like I said, I'm older than everybody in the group. I'm about to turn 50 from the guy. A lot of them, a lot of people don't know I'm about to turn 50. So, legend, though, man, that's why we respect you, though. You know, that. We all, <laughs> all I'm gonna say is welcome legend, to the club. Though. Yeah. So, <laughs> and you got to find. I've been in the game a long time. You got to keep creating. If you don't keep creating, you're not gonna be around a long time. I keep reinventing what we do, and I tell people all the time, hey, the will. Is one is don't keep trying to re reinvent the wheel. Just keep everything because everybody trying to do these fancy things where, oh, I'm going to squat with somebody on my shoulder and do a backflip and do this. Stop all that. Do the stuff that works and you'll be around a long time because everybody is all for show. So if you stop the show and you just guys doing, like say for instance, one of these guys come do a push-up, do a push-up, jump in the air, clap their hands and do this. A bigger dude, I'm like, I ain't messing with him because I'm not about to do that. <laughs> <laughs> but if you just get on the ground and do a push-up and stop calling push-up girl push-up because they're not called girl push-up because they're called assisted push-up because I know I know guys and girls got to do that. So you got to you gotta create the environment where it's not so intimidating. So you got to motivate. Motivation is a bad, is, is a thing. I try to motivate. If you're motivating, you're real, you're real people in. That's it, man. He, he, that's it. And, and Huff, I just want to kind of piggyback on what you said, man. You know, family is important. And, and again, we kind of talked about, we hit on social media. Uh, for those of you guys that kind of follow me on social media, uh, that's, that's the that's that's my main, that's my main thing, right? My family is, is very, very important to me. Like, I, I mean, after we get off of this call, my wife and I both are basically getting ready to take, teach a couple virtual corporate wellness classes for a couple companies. So again, Family is important. So what I what I try to do is I I try to, you know, create 
the life that I want and, and creating the life that I want is having a, a, a healthy family. You know, so I make sure that, you know, people pop in on my social media, you might see my kids walking around in, in the background. You know, my kids are part of my lifestyle. My kids are part of my life. You might actually see my kids sometimes actually get involved and be doing the workouts and be doing the classes while we doing them. That's very important. I mean, at, at the end of the day, we, we talked about this is we want the goal is to get people to do this. The goal is to get people to be active to be fit, to try to understand nutrition, because those are the type of things that's gonna keep us around longer. So, you know, I, 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 my platform is created in a way to where, you know, whether you're dealing with a chronic disease, whether you're dealing with a sports injury, whether you in LA, whether you are in New Orleans, you're gonna have access to my platform because I have a virtual base platform and an online space platform. And, and the way I do my thing is, Huff just kind of talked about it. He says something about, you know, assisted pushups. Everything that I create and everything that we do is designed for all fitness levels, which means there's modifications to everything that we do. You can do something at a high intensity level. You can do something that's a bit modified and you can do something that's kind of more of a beginner. But what my goal and what my approach is, is to bring friends and family to, to the community because my community is open. The doors are open for everybody to enjoy enjoy fitness because it's, it's fitness for all levels. As you kind of mentioned uh, nutrition, that's where I want to go uh, next. How important is nutrition and, 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 and with your clients to create a physical regimen? I mean, uh, gentlemen, would you guys agree with me that the, the nutrition is one of the, is, 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 is top priority? Absolutely. N nutrition is, is very important. Go ahead, Armand. I, I've been talking for a long time. You got it. No, no. I, I tell everybody you can't outwork a bad diet. Um, but at the same time, I remember um, a couple of years ago, I was talking to one of my clients and I was saying, hey, you know, you really need to get on your nutrition. You know, I sent you the program and, you know, I don't know if you're following the program because we're not seeing the pounds fall off like they should. And I had a um, young lady tell me, uh, she said, Armand, you know, I work out so that I can eat the things I want to eat. Right. And so um, I say that to say, you know, everybody doesn't want to be. Um, when, I, when I think about nutrition, everybody doesn't want to be, you know, a size 32 pant if you're a male, right? Everybody, every woman doesn't want to be a size four in a dress. So I think um, my thought process is always is, hey, you know, what are you looking to do in your, in your nutrition and your goals should be based on, you know, if you are looking to look weight, lose weight. You know, because I have lot of, lots of members who say, look, you know, I want to gain weight, right? Or, or, you know, or I don't want to restrict myself. You know, I had a steak last night and I also ate fries with it. So I let people fall wherever they may in terms of, um, you know, forcing and nutritional guidelines on them. And at the same time, do I personally eat fried? No. You know what I mean? Do I stay away from carbs? You know, am, am, I, am I not, am I not, I'm not bread heavy. You know what I mean? I don't drink anything but water um in or in or bourbon you know what i mean but uh i i, I kind of stay away uh, at least at jabs gym out of getting into my clients um business too much with nutrition i'll send them um to dance to fit who's a certified nutritionist um who's very clear about you know he's when you come to him you're coming to lose those pounds chris you want to add anything well with nutrition and i'm 50 50 on both you know i feel a lot of people are like, oh, it's um, 80% nutrition, 20% the gym. I give it 50-50. You got to give your all in both. To me, you like, like Mom said, what you looking to do? Like me, um, I'm like, I'm saying, I'm a savage. I'm going to eat what I want. I'm going to do what I want and how I want. So <laughs> it is what it is. Can you outwork, uh, outwork a, bad, um, a diet? No, probably not. But can you manage it? Of course you could. Of course you could. You know, um, I'm not getting ready for no photo shoot or no magazine. You know, I'm, I'm living. You know, I, I want to live. Um, hey, Chris, if you want a steak, you eat a steak, right? I'm, I'm going to do that. I'm not going <laughs> to eat broccoli. I'm not going to eat one fourth cup of broccoli or this. I'm a certified nutritionist as well. But if you tell me that's what you want, I'm going to put, I'm going to get that for you. I'm going to make sure you're in that direction. And like you said, you got to tell me what you want, you know, you, and that's the biggest thing. People telling you what they want out of it. I'm a feel like I said, I'm 50, 50. It's 50 in the kitchen, 50 in the gym. You got to get your all in both to get what you want. 
Now, do like you said, do I eat particularly bad? No. But if I want something, I'm going to have it. I'm not going to say, oh, no. You know, I don't really eat a lot of fried food. No. But if I happen to say I want a piece of fried chicken, mm, yeah, I'm going to have it. That's just me. But if I'm getting ready for something, if I'm if I'm in a cut phase, I'm not going to have it. But, you know, that depends where I'm at. If I say I want to be in a cut phase, I'm tricked, you know. Like I say, I say for the most part, I drink I drink water for the most part, you know. But every now and then, that fun diet mom do be calling me, and I'm gonna I'm gonna have it. You know, that's that's funny you say that though, because it, again, that's that's what it's about. So you know, that when a client comes to me, right? There's 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 three things, three questionnaires that they get. They get something which is called what I call a lifestyle questionnaire. This lifestyle questionnaire basically lets me know their lifestyle. What they do, what their hobbies are, do they drink, what they eat, whatever, right? Do they sleep? Uh, I also have another questionnaire, which is a nutrition questionnaire. It basically says, what do you eat? How do you eat? What are your nutritional goals? And then I have another questionnaire, which is the uh, a medical questionnaire that kind of lets me know if you're dealing with any chronic diseases or sports injuries or whatever it may be. At the end of the day, just like Huff said, right, it's about what you want. Right. So, you know, you know, I designed your nutrition program based upon whatever your fitness goals are. And then also based upon that movement, too. You got you got to do you got to do both. If you're looking to be a certain way, you got to do both. You can't eat and not work. So, again, both are very, very important. Like Huff said, y'all see my social media on my social media. I might be smoking a cigar and having a glass of bourbon. Right. Every now and then. That's my lifestyle. But at the end of the day, I'm, I'm making sure that I'm not doing anything too much. Anything that you do too much is too much. And, and it could be potentially negatively impactful to your physical, your mental, you know, or, or in regards to your nutrition aspects of things. So I, I, this is what I, what I tell my clients. And this is what we, we talk about. We talk about living a life that's healthy living a life that's well balanced and again there's certain times where you switch the game up sometimes i know i got me a, a little photo shoot coming up i'm going to be a little bit more specific with my diet i'm going to be on top of it a little bit more but i have the tools and the education and the experience to do that so my goal is when my, when my clients come to me is for them you know again i don't like to I don't, I'm, I'm big on learning as much as i can but I'm, I'm built on teaching as much as I can too. So the goal is to teach them to be where they want to be in regards to their lifestyle and also in regards to their long-term or short-term goals, whatever they have. But you get, you know, like you said, hey, if I want a, a piece of fried chicken, y'all best believe I'm going to have it, but I'm going to count my macros though while doing it. Right, right, right. <laughs> on, on, on top of that question, so for your clients as trainers, do you help them create a meal plan or or do you just tell them what to eat? How, how does that work? Well, me and my wife do, do um, we do meal plans. And what I found in today, we have a lot of successful meal prep people. I try to push them towards those meal prep people. And you basically can tell them what you want and they're going to make it exactly the way you want it. And I tell them, you know, how many calories I want this. And you go to that meal prep person. Now, do I meal prep? Yes, I can. But that's a whole separate business. Most trainers try not to get into meal prep unless you have a lot of time, which I don't have a lot of time of, of doing that. And I know both of these guys are extremely busy. So I know they're not in the meal prep business. I push them into other people that really do that because we got people that just extremely meal prep. Those people are so clutch for you, especially if you want to go. If you're a busy person, meal prep people is the way to go because they do everything the way you want. Now, if you got a meal prep person that's just making meals and say, here you go, you want to buy this? Get away from them. They got to specifically make it for you and what you want according to the meal plan and the goals you got. So that's what I feel is big out here. Meal prep people are really killing the game because everybody is so busy today. So a lot of people don't have time to make things. So I think that's key, getting with a meal prep person. Getting a so meal prep, get, yep. How, how do you get... Uh, uh, men in particular to calorie count and if it's is it necessary now me I don't calorie count I don't know if the fellas do I don't but I know I, I like you say it's caloric intake burn more more burn more than you put in you're gonna lose weight in simple math yep. that's weight loss right there in itself 
burn more than you put in. It's no other way. Everybody make losing weight so hard. It's really not. Burn more than you put in. And that's just, you know, that's just simple. I know on a typical day, I probably burn upwards to over 4,000 calories a day. And if I'm eating 2,000, I lost some weight that day. It's just that simple. But a lot of people just make it so hard. And that's, it's so much misinformation given out here. So everybody don't know where to get the correct information at because it's, it's really not that hard. It's really not. But it's so much information everywhere because everybody is a genius or smart now. So everybody's smart now. So you get information from this person, that person. You need to be doing keto. You need to be intermittent fasting. You need to be, you need to be a vegan, which is false. Uh, everybody like you need to be a vegan to lose weight. You need to do this and do that. You got to find what works for. Like we going back, find out what works for you, and getting God find out that God what works for them. And and that's basically what it is. It, it's make things simple. If you make things simple, your your clients will be successful. And people always wonder, like, how do your ladies look so great here? I keep everything simple. Only thing we make hard is hard work. Once it's hard work, keep all the other stuff simple and hard work. That's all it takes. Yeah, I have to, I have to, uh, I have to 100% agree with that. Um, you know, I have a meal plan uh, that I have for different body types, whether you're endomorph, mesomorph, uh, mesomorph or, or, um, or ectomorph. But in, for the most part, though, I don't uh, overcomplicate it for people because, like, you know, like you maybe, uh, Mr. Ware, you know, you're busy, right? And then two, you know, people want to go out to dinner. I mean, we've been in a pandemic and people want to go out to dinner and I don't put the pressure on them to have to, um, you know, track or count their calories. I just more so put in uh, the lifestyle you know, like just basic parameters, if you will. So if I showed you my plan, and it talks a lot about carb cycling, I showed you my plan, it put it pretty much puts um, the parameters of things to just kind of stay away from. Like if you could, you know what I mean, you know, just lay off the condiments, you know, too much, you know, rather than knowing, uh, or rather than having to, because uh, a lot of people don't have success with that, measuring that, you know, you're just doing, you know, a half cup of this or a half cup of that. You know, I, I don't even own measuring cups personally. You know, so I know that, that may be daunting for a lot of people, especially people who don't live in health and well in this world. So I think, uh, um, you know, multiple years ago, I pretty much got away from um, the portion, uh, you know, over over complicating the portion size chart and all those different things, because most people have, uh, you know, too much other things to worry about than to uh, tackle this huge hurdle of trying to get a few pounds off. Um, so I try to simplify that as simple as possible. And we've seen amazing results with just simple, um, straightforward uh, uh, engineering of the mind when it comes to food and eating. Armand, since, I'm, since we're on you, I want uh, you to kind of describe what Run This Town is and why you think it's been such a success. Oh man, I think Run This Town is a love movement. Um, I think I've uh, started a lot of different things and have been uh, primarily uh, for the purpose of creating business. But when I started Run This Town, I was just 22 years old. Um, you know, I was out of Wayne State, you know what I mean? Just a few years removed from college football. And I was kind of going through my own little funk, right? I was in corporate America. I was living out of town and I was traveling every week. You know, I was getting smacked in the face like many of us do with, uh, with, with, with life, right? Where I was, I was working all day, you know what I mean? Managing the council in Wisconsin and, and, and Indiana. And then, you know, I start to gain weight, my, my mood and my emotion. Cause I think that's one thing that we haven't talked about the mental, the mental health aspect of physical movement and good nutrition. And I find myself kind of in this funk um, of, of not, um, not moving my body anymore, right? And so what I decided to do was say, look, you know what, I'm just gonna invite everybody out because I threw parties when I was at Wayne State. I'm gonna invite everybody out and we're gonna just say, hey, look, let's just go and just go for a jog together. Let's just get together and go for a jog. When was the last time you just had a good conversation with somebody sitting around health and wellness, especially in the city of Detroit, the most unhealthy city for the past two years uh, rated by Forbes magazine. Um, and so we invited everybody out. And next week I said, bring a friend. I said, we gotta pay anything. I said, don't pay anything, just come. And then they brought a friend, they brought a friend. And a couple of weeks passed, next thing you know, we had you know, over a hundred people out on Detroit Riverfront. And this is back 2012 when, you know, nobody really went down to the riverfront. It wasn't complete. It wasn't beautiful like it was now. And essentially we just said that um, there needs to be a new happy hour um, that doesn't involve food or wings or drinks, but just involves sweat and a good time. And that's how we essentially uh, created We're in this town. And um, it's been an amazing blessing to my life and many others. 
Congratulations, sir. I got a question and I, I want uh, each one of you to uh, kind of answer it. Uh, can you tell me three initial exercises that you can suggest for all your clients and why? Who wants to go first? Want me to go first? So are you, Des. Yes, I'm going to go first. Well, you know, I, I personally, I believe in, you know, uh, working your, your, your upper body. Uh, I believe in working your, your lower body. And then I also believe in, you know, working your core, you know, so again, just, just full body exercise. So if, if I had to pick three, I, I would definitely pick uh, squats as one of the uh, workouts. Obviously you work in your lower body, you kind of hitting your core. Um, I love that bench press, right? And I would say uh, leg lifts. Obviously, the bench press is going to get, obviously, more chest focused. But again, you're hitting a bit of your arms, um, you're hitting a bit of your shoulders. But again, if, if I would say, I would say leg lifts for the cores, I would say squats, and then I would say kind of bench press. That would probably be my three. But I, I'm just going to say that because those are my three favorite exercises, too, though. Well, my three is probably probably most functional ones you do, and you wouldn't even have to do any core exercise. Squat, deadlift, and overhead press. Them the three main functional lifts that you can do. If you're doing those three in your fitness program, if those three's not in your fitness program, you need to get away from that training. That's number one. If you're not deadlifting, squatting, or overhead press, because that works your abdominal wall. If you squatting, deadlift, overhead press, you don't have to do an ab exercise because you're working your abdominal wall. So if you're doing those three things right there, and your legs is the biggest muscle of your body, so you're burning. One more time, Chris. Squat, deadlift, and overhead press. Those squats is on your legs. Your legs are the biggest muscle of your body. So you're burning more calories. So if you do any of those lifts, you're working your abdominal wall, all of them. So you can darn near have to do minimum ab exercise if you're doing those three. Because if you catch any bodybuilder, most bodybuilders don't do a lot of abs because they squatting and deadlift and overhead pressing because that works your abdominal wall. And when they eat correct, their abs show up. So them the three exercises, if I have to say anything, and if those three exercises are not in the training program, you might as well don't. That's you get away from that train. Hundred percent, hundred percent. I'm I'm a person uh, contrary to proper belief. I hate abs as well. Like like Huff says, man. I, man, I, I, mean, I do anything I can, anything I can do to get away from an ab workout. I do it right. Um, and people um, have that thought process where they think they got to do all these ab movements. You know, you got I got a program that's you know say seven different ab movements, and that's just a marketing thing. I that's know true. that I can do abs. You know what I mean? Um, and if I could pick uh, three, I would pick a course. You got to have a squat. I will also pick stairs, man. You know, I like stuff where you don't need no equipment. You know, if if you have no knee problems and you can get up and down the stairs, I always recommend getting up and down a couple of flights of stairs. And last not least, I'll do, uh, I'll, I'll say a burpee, but a modified burpee, one where you're kind of walking down slowly for people who can't deal with the impact. Those are the three that I will go with, a full body, um, uh, like, like you know, Huff said, you know, your biggest, the, the thing that needs the most blood in your body are those legs, those big quads and hamstrings. And uh, I'll, I'll focus on that. And I think that you can lose any amount of weight and get in the best shape of your life with those three different movements, burpees, squats, and, and, and taking, taking yourself up some stairs. I want to ask, um, ask a few questions from the chat room. First is, uh, how has the pandemic changed your business approach and how have you adjusted? For me, it, it didn't really change me as much. I have a great following. So once the pandemic hit, they pretty much followed my lead. I jumped straight to online. So if, if anything it did, it made my online presence more because I was never big for an online guy. I'm one of those guys, I need to see you. I, I need to, you know, I changed directions multiple times. So I would say anything, it built, it built my online presence as if you have a good following, they're going to do whatever you, they're going to follow you, no matter what. If you have a good following, if you're getting results and your people believe in you, no matter what's going on, they're going to follow you. And it's going to happen. It's things going to happen. Like, say, for instance, like I did an event some time back in Eastern Mar I think Amar was there. Um, you know, I did my kickboxing class. Everybody from my gym was there. Um, if I go down to stuff with one of the ladies, Patty, she invited me to an event. My people going to show up. If you're good at what you do, your people going to follow you. It's just that simple. If you're good at what you do, because I know both guys got following. So whatever you do, your people going to follow. So no matter what's going on, pandemic or not, if you're good at what you do, you shouldn't affect your people. I know a lot of gyms shut down. Not saying they weren't good at what they do, but it's just that you had to put a little bit more effort. That's all you had to put a little bit more effort in what you was doing. But I know I watched this. Strictly went to online and tried and just went crazy with it. 
online, him and his wife. I watched that appreciate pretty much. You. I appreciate you. And I'm glad you said that, Huff. I mean, the, the pandemic, it uh, absolutely uh, changed stuff. It, 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 the pandemic put me at, at a whole nother level. Like Huff said, uh, my wife and I, uh, we basically went online. You know, again, I was, uh, the biggest aspect of my business was corporate wellness. Uh, but we spent a lot of we spent a lot of our time going to different corporations as consultants. So actually being live, doing our educational seminars from nutrition to work life balance to stress management to all of those things. Being um, you know I'm having trainers that I actually uh, house out at different corporations to to train or teach fitness classes and different things like that. Well, when the pandemic hit, we went online. So with us being online, I mean, we were able to touch so many people all over, whether it was pre-recorded classes, pre-recorded educational seminars, um, uh, basically designing corporations, um, teammates, you know, fitness programs, do our fitness apps. Um, it, we went like, we went crazy, you know, so I, I would have to say, say you know the the pandemic changed my line of business but it allowed me to touch so many more people and you know uh, financially uh between uh this year and last year which is the crazy thing in regards to the pipe pandemic uh, we my my uh, dance to fit corporate wellness has probably had the most successful years that i've had since i've been in business based upon a pandemic due to the world changing on us. But with that world changing on us, it allowed me to impact so many more people because I went virtually in order to do so. Des, quick question for you from the uh, chat room. Careers include being at, at work and your leisure time. Do you integrate their fitness training with their time at work or just after work? Meaning, read that question to me one more time. I'm sorry. It says career includes being at work and your leisure time. Right. Do you integrate their fitness training with their time at work or just after work? You know, it, it all depends. I mean, we, we, we obviously talked about that before, right? We talk about, you know, when you work and being a busy professional, all of that, right? So it depends on what your goals are. So I, I do have some of my clients to where it's a better fit for them to potentially do the workout time during their lunch time. There's some clients to where, depending on how busy their lifestyle, it may be better for them to do in the morning time, right? And they may not have that energy to potentially do it in the evening. So what it all comes down to is basically uh, having a lifestyle conversation, deeply looking in your, your current situation whether your family, whether it's your job or whatever it may be and finding out where you're gonna get the most added benefit from what time that you kind of choose to work out. So it's all gonna depend on the, on the person and, and their availability and what works best for their lifestyle. As we wrap up, I, I gotta mention the uh, uh, Office of Minority, Department of Minority Health for United States government is tuning in and they wanted me to make sure that I encourage everyone that it's still not too late to get that COVID-19 vaccine. So um, DCHC, Detroit Community Health Connection, you can give us a call to schedule an appointment at 313-822-0900. With that said, gentlemen, I wanna uh, make sure that I come back to you uh, to give us some final words. How can we keep uh, in contact with you? How can clients, potential clients uh, reach out to you? Real quick, um, probably with the guys too, basically on social media. Mine's is Gri um, Grizzly Performance 80. Most people have an Instagram. So it's pretty much simple. Grizzly Performance 80 on Instagram and Christopher Grizzly Help on Facebook. That's probably the easiest way to get in contact with me. That's pretty simple. You know, uh, media site pretty much control everything in the fitness world. So with me, it's just Grizzly Performance 80 and on Facebook, Christopher Grizzly Help. Come on. Yeah. Um just uh, Armand Rashad on everything, on social media, Instagram, Twitter, uh, ArmandRashad.com. Um, you know, you just Google Armand Rashad, all my information pops pops right up. What about you, Des? Uh, you can uh, reach me at uh, des 2 fit on uh, Facebook, uh, des 2 fit on uh, Instagram, uh, Desi Johnson on uh, LinkedIn, 
And similar to our mod, you can just go ahead and Google Des to fit and you should be able to find everything about me. Gentlemen, thank you so much. May is Physical Wellness and Fitness Month. Become stronger together. We appreciate you being here. On behalf of Detroit Community Health Connection, the Curtis Center, We Dare School of Nursing, University of Michigan, and the DRB Lab, University of Michigan, we appreciate you being here. Thank you very much, Dr. Burns and McKenzie, for helping us put this on. We look forward to doing this again. Gentlemen, thank you and have a great um, day. Derek, hold on one second. Don't forget to announce for June for... Uh... June is Men's Health Month. And thank you again. All of you guys did a wonderful job and your following is just crazy on social media. They're, it's an understatement what they're saying right now. They are doing great work in the community. Um, did you want to tell them about um, June? June is um, Men's Health Awareness Month. So we have a couple uh, things planned. The day before Father's Day, the Saturday before Father's Day, I think that's June 19th, we'll, Detroit Community Health Connection will be sponsoring a 5K uh, walk or run virtual. Uh, so stay tuned. More information is coming out on that. Other than that, I think that is it, Dr. Burns. Once again, thank you for your time. Gentlemen, we appreciate you being here with us. Have a great day. You too.